In this episode of Traveling Through Time, it's a weekend getaway in Crete. We'll explore a Venetian fortification, the Palace of Nassos, the Archaeological Museum of Heraklion, and great local cuisine, all in the shadow of the Palace of Minos. One of the greatest things about archaeology is exploring. So, just follow me. Here's the arrival at Knossos, the largest Bronze Age site in Crete, and is considered one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. First discovered in the 1870s by Minos Kalikarinos, but principally excavated by Arthur Evans. And he's the one responsible for all of those infamous and famous reconstructions. Looking at the on-site map, we start to the west of the palace at number two, where there are storage containers. There's also a large open courtyard, and that's where we start our tour. So here are these huge storage areas. We've just now begun our exploration of the Palace of Nassos, and these are large storage facilities, we think, that were used for quite some time. And here's that large courtyard with benches along the sides of the palace. And the palace is there in the distance. Now we're gonna make our way along a processional route past three and four. And here we have making our way into the palace site under the shade of some trees, which is great because it's quite hot. And we have a lot of reconstructions to facilitate our entryway into the palace itself. And we come across already our first reconstructions. And the original materials for the columns, for example, were made of wood. And here we have substantially more materials, concrete poured, in fact, to give coverage to a lot of the archaeological site. This was radical at the time. We don't do such interventions in archaeological sites today. But it brings us inside now to the main staircase into the central area of the palace. And here again, we see restoration, reconstruction, and copies of frescoes found right on site. We make our way up into the elevated area of the palace, but underneath, there's now a modern covering that covers storage areas. So we have multi-use over the entire palace extending on multiple levels. Obviously the rudimentary spaces are used for storage and servants quarters. And it's on top, of course, we now can enter into some reconstructed spaces, places that were inhabited by the royal family. We have also here many copies of the frescoes found on site, now found in the Museum of Heraklion. But we do get in this elevated position, this multiple storied palace, we understand that we're in a privileged area in the entire structure. We bring ourselves over into the large courtyard number 10. And we see that this is a sprawling complex and there are many different quarters of the palace. But now we're gonna pass into the throne room the so-called throne room with benches on the outside. Still original, pavement is original here as well. And we pass then into that central chamber and we have finally original frescoes preserved in situ. So we have a lustral basin. We have probably even a basin here for water. Obviously the columns are reconstructed, but the frescoes are real and that throne is actually real as well. Was it for the king? Was it for a god to be perched on it? These are questions we still have about the throne room. Our journey continues here along this other modern walkway. We're now taking an alternative route to get to this, the Eastern Palace block. And here we have a lot of heavy reconstruction. We see here again, modern frescoes replicating the frescoes that were actually found here. But the real legitimate feature, the star of this portion, is that monumental staircase. So again, it's cluing us into the fact that even though we have heavy restoration, this was a palace built on the side of a large hill, and you're going to have multiple stories. You're going to have an almost labyrinth kind of experience 
making your way through the residence of the royal family. We can also take ourselves outside the palace again. We're going to be entering in the northern gate, and here you have what's called the theater. But what it is is a monumental entry point with lots of stairs. There's a space then for procession. There's a space for pageantry. You can imagine yourself going up these stairs and into the northern gate. This is the site that's actually excavated. But over here, where you can see, is a lustral area. So it's a place that's probably associated with cult and worship. It's also a place that's filled with water. So you have to think about where we are and the sophisticated hydraulics that were involved here to sustain these people, right? Because you're up isolated on a hilltop, you're collecting rainwater, you're storing it, and ultimately part of that experience is tied to the worship of the deities that are keeping you safe. We have this incredible ruin, this palace of Nassos. We have incredible color. And we know that the color originally existed here. The reds, the blues. So most of what you see today walking around the site is modernist reconstruction. But it gives us a sense of what was here. We also get a sense of scale and elevation. Right there is the northern gates. You can imagine being a guest, making your way from the coast inland to this palace to this ruler and to have then an incredible experience of almost a godlike figure attached to the well-being of the citizens in the surrounding areas controlling Heraklion port and there must have been a level of pageantry of ostentation food music wine maybe the minotaur maybe a labyrinth that's in mythology but it definitely had around it a mystique that lasted through history, Knossos. One of the ways in which we do get to the stories of the Minotaur, we get to the mythology, is that this culture, this ruler, was associated with bulls. And you have the famous fresco from this palace that shows acrobats or dancers literally riding bulls. And then the myth ties it together and says that Minos got a bull from the god Poseidon. And it was so beautiful, he decided he wasn't going to sacrifice it to the god of the sea. So Tilis' wife was driven mad with passion for this bull as punishment to Minos. She got Didylus, that expert craftsman, to build a wooden cow, a heifer, into which she crawled. And then she spent the night with the bull and the progeny, the offspring, the Minotaur. We have it all associated with this palace that we know had heavy associations already with the bull that you see in the incredible decoration throughout the palace. Now it's so hot in Nassos, let's take a break. Let's cool off here at the Blue Palace. This is how I spent my weekend, and it is a glorious place to dip into the Cretan culture and to dip into the Mediterranean. Some great accommodations in Crete are here at Blue Palace of the Luxury Collection, and it gives you an extraordinary sense of belonging to a community. The cuisine is exquisite, and the water is pristine. The whole setting is, you're immersed with nature, and you really feel part of the history and the climate of Crete. My experience was extraordinary, from the breakfast, to the different series of pools right along the water's edge. The beach was pristine. It's an extraordinary moment of relaxation. Nothing like jumping in the Mediterranean. And of course, amazing to have a pool in your room. Can't beat that. And in front of us in this beautiful bay, you have the island of Spinalonga, which is extraordinary. It has an ancient past as a Greek city, but it takes on a new life as a Venetian fortification already from the 15th century. They're going for the salt pans. They're going for commerce and trade. And what's left behind out of the ruins of Venetian fortification after the Ottomans is a leper colony in the 20th century. Today, it's abandoned. It's a place you can easily explore from the Blue Palace. What an extraordinary experience. And of course, the food is so local I've had some of the best meals ever in Greece, 
And what an extraordinary layout we have here in the shades yeah. of the trees. It was magnificent. And I was sure to try one of the local specialties, snails. I really hope you're feeling refreshed. Well, after that dip into the Mediterranean, it's time to go back to the Palace of Minos. One of the most exciting places you can ever visit in archaeology is a place that can connect you to stories of the past, to mythology. And I don't think anything really looms larger on the horizon in archaeology than the Palace of Minos. So coming here is like a dream. Coming here is a chance to explore a site that uh, grabbed me when I was a kid, when I was looking at books and magazines in elementary school. And of course, uh, Sir Arthur Evans also was enamored with the stories and went out to dig for the truth. And what he found was a spectacular, uh, spectacular palace. And the core of it today that you can explore is dating from 1700 to about 1450 BC. And of course, you're gonna have a secondary Crato Mycenaean period for another bit of time. But the core of what like, say, captures our imagination is that initial grand palace replacing earlier palaces on the same location. And it ties into myth, it ties into legend, it ties into Minos, it ties into Didylus making the labyrinth. It ties into Didylus escaping from Crete, going back uh, to the mainland. It, there's so many, so many stories that we have associated, but here's the physical proof. And we have a very sophisticated society. We have an incredible series of terraces. And then at the pinnacle of it, through grand staircases, you have that core of the palace, you have the throne room, you have remains of frescoes, you have the gypsum walls, and it really makes for an extraordinary, extraordinary visit. And at the same time, we have to give a lot of credit to the original uh, excavators. And yes, today it does have a little bit of that Disneyland effect, all the great majority of the frescoes that were discovered are inside the Heraklion Museum. But to have these reproductions, to have the roofing systems, and to give us a sense of these physical spaces really enhances the experience. I don't think you do it like this today. We don't practice archaeology and the reconstruction work in the same way, but we're indebted to those initial efforts. We're indebted to the, the attempts uh, to preserve these spaces and to give us a sense of the, the grandeur of the, of the public spaces. And it's, it's something that's really worth your time coming here to Crete and digging down deep into the history of this magnificent island. The way the site is managed, the way that it facilitates your passageway through the entire complex. I, I just, I'm really tickled. I mean, this is really, this is about as good as it gets. And, uh, and, and the combined experience between coming to the site and then going to the Grand Archaeological Museum in Heraklion is a great way of tying in the experience together because here, Although we have some fresco, we have some materials that are indeed original in on location in situ, the bulk of what was found here is in the museum. So you really want to pair those two things together, but nothing beats coming to the original archeological space and exploring on your own, going up those stairs, going in those rooms. The Heraklion Museum shows us with this wooden model, the extent of the palace we've been exploring. We also have incredible finds, like this game board that was found in the artisan's quarter. We have from another site in Crete, a reconstruction, a terracotta model going back to 1700 BC. And here's the Physkos disc found in another palace in Crete, which depicts a language still to be deciphered dating to around 2000 BC, contemporary with linear A, but still not deciphered. We look at the original frescoes. So here is that incredible bull leaping scene that underlines the presence of the bull, the importance of the bull in the culture of the people of Nassos. And here is a delicate miniature fresco of women. And this is probably the best preserved series of human figures, these women the rendering of the hair that is preserved that then became the basis for the large, somewhat imaginative 
reconstructions of large-scale figures of women in the palace of Knossos. And finally, we have these two figures found in a shrine inside the palace of Knossos. This is the famous goddess depicting in each hand snakes. It's giving us a sense of the theatricality involved and the importance of female deities in this site. I mean, I think that one of the great motivations of the original archaeologist was, are we going to actually find a labyrinth? And that's not actually the case. But what you do have, if you do explore this site, it is like a labyrinth, because we have multiple storied structures all spilling across uh, the top of the hill and terrace down below. We're talking about 20,000 square meters. This is an enormous complex. And in fact, today, it is like a labyrinth in that you see the storerooms and then apartments on top of those storerooms and on top of that the, 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 the core palace also of multiple stories. So if you put it all together, making your way through this entire complex was like a large labyrinth. From above we could admire this complex, this so-called palace complex, even think of it as the center of the city of ancient Knossos, just six miles from the coast. And along the coast, there's the Blue Palace, a place to relax, a place to enjoy the stunning landscape of Crete. So listen guys, this is my suggestion to you when you're exploring an archeological site. Number one, shoes. Make it comfortable. Think about the clothing that you're wearing, not too tight. You wanna maybe cover up as much as possible so you won't get sunburned. A hat, sunscreen, sunglasses. And most important of all, let's say, besides the shoes and the covering, water. And you need that water to keep yourself hydrated and also to make sure that your energy won't flag. Also consider snacks, because you want to be in a site like Nassos for hours to explore, also to absorb the history. You can't just get it by a lightning tour of the five or six key points of the palace and off you go to the next site. Take the time to sit in the shade, to contemplate. I'd recommend reading some passages uh, from Greek mythology about Minos, about Daedalus and the Minotaur, and really connect with that past which brought archaeologists here hundreds of years ago and bring the tourists here from all over the world. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Crete, this weekend getaway. Join me for more adventures throughout the Mediterranean. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.